everybody, it's your residential brickologist Lego Lee here with another throwback Lego set review. And today, in honor of the release of Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, I thought it would be fun to look at an old Lego Spider Man set, specifically from the original Spider Man sequel, Spider Man 2, all the way back in 2004. Today, we have set number 4853 called Spider Man Street Chase. It used to retail for about $10 here in the United States. States, contains 73 pieces and adjusted for inflation, that's about $16. I no longer have the box, but I do have the instruction manual. The instructions here have 21 pages of building and give us a glimpse at what the box art would have looked like. Back in 2004, Lego boxes had this hideous blue template that pretty much every theme adhered to. I hate the look of these boxes. This art's kind of cool, the rest of it looks horrible. Now, at the end of the manual, you do have an alternative build, something Lego doesn't really do much these days, which is cool to see, and adds for the rest of the sets from this way these two sets in particular are just iconic sets that I would love to get, but they're ridiculously expensive and very hard to find. Despite only having 73 pieces, you actually get two small vehicles, a fairly jam-packed little street, and of course three minifigures with this set. Let's look at those figs here first. The first minifigure included with this set here, of course, is Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And this figure is finally getting an update here in 2023 with the Statue of Liberty Spider-Man No Way Home Final Battle set, which is very exciting. However, despite that, and despite this figure here coming in five different sets, he's still worth about $40, which is really impressive. And man, for 2004, this figure is freaking phenomenal. I love the printing, the silver really pops, the eyes look amazing and the back detail is really good. I think this figure personally was ahead of its time. Bravo, Lego. The antagonist characters of this set here are Jewel Thieves. This is Jewel Thief number one. I like his tracksuit. I like his sunglasses. The beanie is a very generic piece and there's no detail from the back. Really nothing crazy about this figure, but he's exclusive, I guess. And finally, we get another Jewel Thief. And I do really like his torso print with the classic Lego Space logo there. The face print and the beanie are pretty generic. And this guy has an absolutely massive backpack piece. Lego does not use that piece anymore, but it is very cool, albeit comically oversized. Our first little quote unquote vehicle here is a skateboard for the Jewel Thief that has a sticker with a spot Spider-Man decal. This makes no sense to me. Why would a villainous character be using something that looks like it's for the main hero? Like, imagine if a stormtrooper was riding on a speeder bike that had Han Solo theming. That is very bizarre to me. However, it's a very cool sticker, and if you're building like a Lego City skate park, this is something I think I would recommend to add to that. Other than that, really confusing. Vehicle number two is the classic Lego trike piece here in blue. It can move at the front here, which is nice, and the back has storage for the jewels, which are kind of precariously just attached there. Doesn't seem super secure to me. And of course, you can't put your thief on there. This is definitely a more competent vehicle, if you ask me. The name of this set here is Spider-Man Street Chase, and here is the street itself. And look, no street in New York City will be complete without a rat piece. I absolutely love that detail in this set. You also get an extremely simple build for a fire hydrant, and on the other side there is a lamp post that also has street signs. This one-way sticker is very useful. You also have one for Vedrick Street, and attached to that is a spider web with a very cool transparent blue spider. I like that piece quite a lot. Instead of actually recreating the asphalt of the street itself, Lego gives us this this ramp of sorts, which I guess you can kind of wheel your trike up onto the ramp and then it will like flip over and kind of launch it, or you can have it be like a skateboard ramp or something, but at the same time it also can be like a catapult to like launch the figures. 
I don't know. It's very nondescript. The instruction manual doesn't really provide any context how to exactly use this play feature. So just kind of get imaginative with it and do whatever you want. It's Lego. Finally, here you have the amazing string piece for Spider-Man's web connected to the Diamond Store, which has to be one of the most pathetic storefronts I've ever seen in a Lego set. The sticker looks nice, but the rest of it is literally just a ladder piece that you can lift up to reveal one single diamond for your thieves to steal. No windows, no detail from the back, it is literally just two bricks thick. I don't know what this is, it's kind of lame. Bringing everything together, the one word I'd use to describe this set is eclectic. It kind of just feels like Lego took every single generic New York City trope they could find and threw them together into a weird hodgepodge of a set. And overall, I think this is a solid parts pack. It's definitely something you can use to expand your own mocks, but as a design itself, this set is very poor. Obviously, this build is 19 years old. I'm gonna cut it some slack, but even by the standards of 2004, especially when compared to the other banger sets from this Spider-Man 2 wave, this thing just doesn't hold up. First off, it's not based off an iconic scene from the movie. Honestly, does this even happen in the movie? This is just a completely random thing Lego kind of made up besides the specific Spider-Man figure. And the designs here just suck. I mean, I guess the lamp post is good, but that diamond store is terrible. The ramp is confusing. The fire hydrant is whatever. I like the rat, but overall, this is not a good build. The biggest praise I can give this set is that the build is a very large size for the original price of $10. You also get three minifigures and adjusted for inflation, 16 bucks. Definitely a good price for this set. Now, if you wanna get this set here in 2023 on aftermarkets, it's about $160 sealed. Don't even think about that. Not sealed, it's about $65. Even at that point, if you just really want the Spider-Man figure, buy the figure for about 30 to 40 bucks and just skip this set entirely. It is not worth it. I really hate being a negative Nancy, but I have to keep it real and give y'all my honest opinion. I don't like this set and I would not recommend this set, which is why it's gonna get a very low score of a four out of 10. Those are just my thoughts though. Love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell for notifications. Look at the description to find me on social media. Maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. Any small donation helps out the channel. Thank you all so much for watching today's review and I hope to see you all next time. Peace out, God bless, Bye bye